Hello everyone. So today we would like to bring you another opportunity for you to study in Norway tuition free. So the Norwegian um, University of Science and Technology, uh, also known as NU, is one of the most prominent universities in Norway. And it offers uh, programs along the following lines. So it offers master's degree programs, PhD programs, as well as uh, programs for exchange students. So uh, for international students, we are going to talk about um, master's uh, opportunities to study at NTNU in Norway. So this is a very prominent, very uh, known university is one of the best universities in Norway, not, if not in Europe. And it has what they call the International Master's Program. Now this is a program uh, where all master's degrees are taught in English, so it's very favorable for international students who do not speak Norwegian. So to apply for uh, master's degrees in this program. Uh, you can come from any country all over the world. There is no restriction. As you can see here, they say the master's programs are taught in English. They have a duration of two years and the keyword here is NTNU charges, no tuition fee. So all these master's degree programs are tuition free. You just have to choose your program, program of your choice, apply, uh, get admitted, and start your two years master's studies in Norway. We are going to look at the process on how you are supposed to go about this and a few details that you have to know before you begin your application. So like they've said, it's the international master's degree programs taught in English entirely. So. All you need to know is English, no knowledge of Norwegian whatsoever, nothing. And there is a list of uh, those international master's programs, as you can see here. So the first thing I would recommend for you is come to this list. By the way, we are going to leave all the links uh, that we are going to refer to in this video. Uh, so check the description in the, in the a video description below and you'll see all the links uh, that we are going to refer to in this video as well. Remember to subscribe as well and leave any comments, questions, and we will respond as timely as we can. So like we were saying, the first thing you need to do, this link, when you come to this link, just follow the same procedure like we are doing here. Under the international master's programs, just click on the arrow and it will show all the master's programs that are taught in English. There is a long list and definitely you will find your uh, profile in here in this list. So let's take, for example, a, say you want to do electrical, electric power engineering. All you have to do is click on that. It will take you to the, to the program page and from the program page you'll get all the details you need to know about the program name of the program the degree type as you can see here the duration full time number of credit units that's 120 credit units 60 credit units per year and more information is found here what kind of candidate they are looking for and which skills you're gonna uh, have at the end of the program. And the most important thing you have to look at here is uh, the uh, eligibility or requirements for, for application. So basically here, for example, for electric or engineering, they say you must have a Bachelor of Science or Bachelor of Engineering degree in electric power engineering or electrical engineering the specialization in power engineering as you can see here or renewable energy 
with a focus on electric, electric power engineering with an average grade of first class division or second class division. So each program has its own um, requirements that you have to fulfill in order to apply for that program. So if you have a Bachelor of Science, Bachelor of Engineering in Electrical Power Engineering, this is a good program for you. However, you must also have an average grade that is equivalent to a Norwegian C. And then you must have a minimum of, uh, these are some credit units that you are supposed to have in several subjects. For example, here you are supposed to have completed 30 credit units. This is in your previous degree or previous bachelor's degree. At least 30 credit units in mathematics, including five credit um, credit units in um, in statistics, and also uh, a minimum of 7.5 credit units in physics and electromagnetism. When you read through the requirements here, you have to interpret a few things, first of all. So the first requirement is quite easy to understand. So which domain do you have your bachelor's degree in and which spe specialization? So that is easy to understand, okay? I did electrical engineering and I, my specialization is in uh, renewable energy or what, whatever the case. But here, when it comes to an agency, you need to know how do my uh, grades um, equate to the Norwegian grading system. So for that, we've um, looked at um, the grading system in Norway, and it goes as follows. So basically, if you're, um, actually this one brings it out more uh, clearer. It depends now, if your grading system is in one to five, for example, your grading system in your country is uh, a CGP based grading system of a one to five. So you will know where you fall according to uh, these um, specifications. For example, if your CGP A five, that means you have a grade A. Four, that means you have a grade B. And three, that means you have a grade C. Two, grade D, and one, grade E. So this is the closest thing we would, we, we would find that would help you to know where you fall in the Norwegian grading system. So you can equate your CGPA grading system to the Norwegian grading system following this table. So, so we shall leave this link as well in the description. So basically, if you have a three, uh, at least a theory CGPA, that means you fall under the grade C. So that means you are eligible to apply for that program. So as you can go back here, the Norwegian C is required. So that means if you have a CGPA of theory out of five, you are eligible and you meet the requirement. The other thing is to do with uh, credit units. Every sub, every degree program will require you to have completed a certain number of credit units in certain subjects. So this um, kind of specification is only done to European universities. So how do you uh, equate your uh, studies to the ECTS grading um, um, study uh, system? So this is how you do it. We also found uh, another resource here that will help you to know exactly if you meet the requirement when it comes to ECTS for a given subject. For example, for a subject, um, one ECTS equals 25 hours of study. This, is, this includes uh, lectures and lab, and lab work. So, Go to your um, um, transcript or study plan and see how many hours you have in a given subject. All right? And depending on how many hours you've studied the given subject for the whole semester or for the whole year, then you can calculate how many 
is how many ECTS you got for that very subject. So for example, if you did a hundred hours for let's say uh, mathematic, mathematics once or math mathematics one or calculus, that means a hundred divided by twenty-five that is four. That means you have four ECTSs. And if you did three uh, subjects in mathematics each of a hundred uh, hours total, that means you have four um, times four ECTSs, that is 16 ECTSs. That means to have a hundred, or rather, how many did they say here? For you to have 30 ECTSs in mathematics, if each um, course in mathematics is let's say five ECTSs according to your calculation, that means you must have done six courses in mathematics in order to fulfill the requirement for 30 ECTSs. So first thing you need to do is go and calculate how many courses you've done in mathematics, calculus, algebra, matrix, differential equations. Sum them up, all of them. And then find out how many hours you've done for each course in mathematics. How many hours do I have for calculus? How many hours do I have for um, matrix? Um, how many hours do I have for different equations? As the courses are arranged. And then based on that, calculate how many credits you need for each of those subjects. And then at the end, calculate how many um, total. ECTSs you have in mathematics as a field. So that is very important and that, that will be um, common for all subjects. So we can also look at another subject, for example, and you'll see that it's a STEM case. We'll come back here. You go to Applied Computer Science, for example. Applied Computer Science, they'll still give you the whole information, degree, duration. And then you come to the requirements here. So when to, you come to the requirements, still they require you to have a, at least a grade C, we've seen that one, a CGP of uh, one to five, a three is uh, equivalent to grade C, so you're good, to, you're good with that. And then they will say um, a bachelor's degree, uh, and then here they require 7.5 credits in mathematics. So it's the same, same case. Go and see how many courses you've done in mathematics and then calculate credit units for each course and then get the aggregate of the all the courses you've done in, in mathematics and make sure you meet this requirement. And here they say 80 credit units in computer science, digital processing, computer vision or robotics. So here they need 80 credit units. So go and see how many courses or course subjects you've done in computer science, digital processing, computer vision, and robotics. Calculate the credit units for each course study for each subject. Let's say subject. Let's say subject. Okay, maybe you have um, um, programming one, programming two, computer architecture. Um, I don't know which subject you've done in your bachelor's degree. All the subjects that are related to computer science, digital processing, and computer vision and robotics. Find the number of credit units. In other words, how many hours have you studied each subject for the whole semester? How many hours? And then divide then all the total number of hours by 25. And that will give you the number of credit units for that subject. And then aggregate the total number of credits credit units for all the subjects and then you know how many credit units you have in these domains that I mentioned here. So these are very important for you to know, okay, what are my chances of being admitted? That is very important. So it's always very good to, of course, the university admission committee or board will calculate all these uh, things when you submit your admission, but you need to know, okay, which subject should I, which course should I apply for? What favors me best? So when you calculate these credit units and, and um, 
uh, requirements it gives you uh, also an option and uh, the ability to make a good selection for a subject maybe you want applied computer science but you find out that um, maybe electrical power engineering favors you best because you've completed more credit units that are required for this course so you would say okay maybe let me apply for this one that it favors me most then applying for another one where I don't have enough credit units in as the course requires. So take this on yourself and go through the whole um, process, calculate and see which one favors you most and then apply. Because this is, um, the application process is very um, competitive as you would guess. This is a tuition free study. So everyone and Norway is one of uh, the countries that students um, um, are most interested in uh, studying at, in and you know it's very competitive. So go through all these um, subjects, let's say um, chemistry for example. Okay, let's see. Chemistry for example. You come here, still it's the same thing, you'll um, Go through the information, then you go to the requirements for admission, and you'll see what they need. It's almost the same thing. Grade C. Um, where is it? 80 credit units in chemistry in chemistry courses, and and all the things. So look at uh, what is required. Uh, calculate based on your uh, bachelor's degree. Um, profile and uh, make sure you apply for the correct uh, subject. So after you've gone through the whole process and you've selected which uh, subject you feel and wish you want to apply for, uh, the next thing is to look at is what the application process looks like. So the application process is divided into uh, several sections. As you can see here, there is a section for exchange students. International master's degree programs, this, this is what we are uh, concentrating on. So if we go to that, the first thing you will look at us is the deadline for application. So students that are coming from non-EU countries, non-EEA countries, your deadline for application is 1st December. Submit your documents by 1st December. Students from EU, EA, countries uh, deadline is first March next year and then Nordic students is 15th April next year and if that is um, if seen the uh, deadline for application the next thing is to look at how to apply the whole process the very process so this first step like they say here is um, admission requirements so all, pro all programs require at least a grade C, that is a CGPA of three on a grade of one to five. And then specific academic requirements, we looked at every program has its own specific academic requirements. So you make sure you meet those ones. Number of credit units in each subject, number of credit units in so and so, uh, field of study, stuff like that. We've looked at that already. The next thing is English proficiency. So, um, the English proficiency that must be fulfilled is, uh, I think it's also, um, okay. Okay, here it is. So, accepted English tests. You must either have completed TOEFL four. And minimum score is 90 points for internet based test or 600 points for paper based test. And then IELTS as well is uh, accepted and they need a, an overall band of 6.5. They also accept Cambridge, they also accept PTE. And basically that's it. Other proofs, let's see what they say. Yeah, there are some exemptions for, um, okay. 
are the proofs of English exemptions. As long as you fulfill one of the points below, you don't need an English proficiency test. So, um, we leave this one that is uh, not so uh, important for us. Applicants from EU countries. If you have a high school diploma from an exempt country, so this is for EU countries, exempt countries, they will show you. Um, so Austria, Belgium, all these countries, look at the list and see. This is for applicants from EU countries. Your country is exempt, so you don't need uh, to, pro to provide an English certificate. Also, if you have a certificate documenting that you have, uh, you meet a B2 English lang language level, you don't need to submit an Eng English language certificate. If you have a one year study at a university physically located in Austri Australia, Canada, Ireland, New Zealand, Great Britain, or USA, you don't need language certificate. If your university degree, if you have a university degree with a major in English language, for example, Bachelor or Bachelor of Arts or Masters of Arts in English language, English literature or linguistics, you don't need an English language certificate. Applicants who have completed a minimum of one year university level studies with English as a language of instruction in one of the Nordic countries don't need an English language certificate. So if you completed a bachelor's degree, from one of the following countries, you also don't need an English language certificate. Botswana, Ethiopia, Philippines, Jamaica, Gambia, Ghana, Cameroon, Kenya, Liberia, Malawi, Namibia, Nigeria, Sierra Leone, Swaziland, South Africa, Tanzania, Trinidad and Tobago, Uganda, Zambia and Zimbabwe, you don't need an English language certificate. So these countries completed your bachelor's degree in these countries, you don't need an English language certificate. Also, if you completed an, an A level in English from one of the following countries, still it's almost the same list, but there are different countries here, you don't need an English language certificate. So it doesn't matter why you completed your bachelor's degree, but if you completed your A level exams in one of these countries, Botswana, Gambia, Ghana, Hong Kong, Cameroon, Kenya, Macau, Malawi, Malaysia, Mauritius, Namibia, Nigeria, Sierra Leone, Singapore, Swaziland, Tanzania, Togo, Tonga, sorry, Uganda, Western, Samoa, and Zimbabwe, you don't need an English language certificate. So these two, I think, will apply mainly for international non-EU students. So if you completed a bachelor's degree in, for, in one of these countries or a, an A-level exam in one of these countries, you don't need an English language certificate. You only need to submit proof that you completed uh, your uh, degree in one of those countries and you're uh, good to go. So we've seen English language set, uh, um, requirements, sorry. Okay, performance, we said you must have a minimum of C. So first of all, let's recap a little bit. Completed a bachelor's degree in a relevant field. Remember each field, each course shows you which field you must have completed in order to apply for that course. You have a minimum C grade. English language proficiency, we've seen that. Excellent performance. And that's almost it. You meet this theory, you are eligible to apply. The next thing is to look at the deadlines and make sure you apply by 1st December. The other thing is now uh, the application process. Oh, the documents actually. The list of documents goes as follows. You need a passport, a document, good documentation for funding. Remember, this is tuition free, but students must have enough funds to take care of themselves when they are in Norway. So you must have uh, proof that you have enough funds facilitate your stay, even though you're not paying tuition fee. So your upper secondary school uh, level. So you click on this link and you see the details on how you could fulfill the, 
the funding requirement that is important upper secondary school uh, grades transcript or diploma and then official transcripts and diploma from your bachelor's degree as well so they're saying up transcripts must be uploaded in the, in the application online however some countries are required required or requested to send uh, their uh, grade transcripts and diplomas uh, via post to the university and we, we are going to see the list of those countries so we've seen the english language pro, uh, requirement if you're exempted you don't need these uh, english tests if you're not exempted you need to submit um, the english test results then your cv verification report of education documents this is for two countries china and pakistan so if you're applying from china or pakistan you need a verification report of education uh, documents and the instruction on how you're supposed to do it and send it is here and then uh, that's that that's that's almost it now here bachelor's degree and transcripts if you're coming from one of these countries you must have your bachelor's degrees and diplomas and transcripts sent hard copies sent to the university in addition to submitting them online so in the online application you will upload the transcripts and diplomas but after that copies must be sent to the university in hard cop as hard copies and these must be sent directly from your university so it's your university that you must talk to talk to your dean or head of faculty or whoever is responsible um give them the correct addresses and they should send the uh, hard copies must come officially from the university or college where you completed your bachelor's degree so these countries are as follows cameroon canada ethiopia eritrea ghana nigeria philippines sudan uganda and the united states of america if you're coming from these countries and applying from these countries make sure your university sends your bachelor's degree transcript and uh, diploma final diploma and whatever this should be copies not originals copies should be sent directly from your university and i think that those are the major instructions that you need to follow and here what you need to do is now go to the application portal here this is where you complete all the information that is required uh, for the online application uh, process um so they said go to the application portal select the language uh, click on international applicant register you have to register as a new applicant answer the questions regarding your english qualifications answer questions regarding your residence answer questions regarding your funding remember we said funding is important here you must be able to prove that your funds take care of yourself rest in no way and so the process is very streamlined here they tell you what you must do what you must not do and the application uh, portal looks exactly like this like they said so you come here to international applicant yeah you don't have a, an account already you have to register first next are you currently no i'm not a student no i don't have an origin personal id number level of english so this is where you select where which uh, category you fall under so you either have a certificate uh, english uh, test results or so for alts yeah, you have cambridge i'm an eu e e S citizen and stuff like that and so you select what uh fits you so if you're one of those countries we talked about that are exempt you click this i feel i feel feel one of the alternative requirements mentioned on the website above so and then do you have uh, this is about citizenship no i'm not a nordic citizen 
And then here you talk about your funding. I have a sponsor. Sponsor means a person who will, um, who you will submit uh, as um, a person who will uh, facilitate your stay while in Norway. Or if you have your own money already, or if you have a scholarship somewhere to um, facilitate your uh, stay. Oh, so you click what what. Uh, What fits you in this um, in this uh, on on this list? So maybe if you have your you're going gonna provide your own funds, you click on I'll, pro, I'll be my own sponsor, and then you click next, and then you can now register your application for admission, and then you click next, and then you start filling in your information, and so that's how the process goes. So this was, we tried to keep it as brief as possible, although it went way beyond, but I we hope that this information is um, will guide you to uh, help you uh, complete your application and hopefully get selected for your degree program. Thank you for listening.